the World Refugee Day Rally, organised by the Refugee Rights Action Network. This world seems so much chaos, there's a shadow on the land And I search the stars for answers, but I just don't understand Why broken souls in need of help cried out for us to hear Oh, we could have offered hope and love, instead we offered fear The fear of drab detention, locked like dingoes in a pound the fear of no horizon on this so-called Christian ground And the way we reap our weakest is what the world will see When we can give refuge to a refugee Why can't we give refuge to a refugee? Know, we're here today. Um, you might know that this year marks 20 years of mandatory detention in this country. That's 20 years of the policy of locking up innocent refugees in these detention centre hell holes. This is disgusting. This must end. This is why we're here today to demand an end to mandatory detention, to demand freedom for the refugees. Um, Rama from the Tamil, um, he's the vice president of the Tamil Association, just to come up here and speak um, today about the plight of Tamil um, asylum seekers. States and governments have systematically followed a very ethnic policy of trying to downgrade the Tamils who are one of the founding races of that country. All the historians of Sri Lanka have said the Tamils and Sinhalese were the people who founded that state. And we have had a state separately in the north of Sri Lanka from well over the 13th or 14th century, from the time that the first the Europeans arrived. However, after independence, a number of discriminatory legislation was passed. But legislation and that alone is not sufficient. A, a concerted effort was made to attack the persons and property of Sri Lankan Tamils in Sri, in Sri Lanka. And in addition to that, like what the English tried to do in Ireland, there was a systematic attempt to change the demographics of the traditional homelands of the Sri Lankan Tamils. That is why you get such a great influx of Sri Lankan Tamils today here, because they have been chased out. All the young people of fighting age have been chased out. That must be the deal. So the 1958 riots, the 1983 riots, and what happened soon after the so-called defeat of the young men who rose to obtain our freedom clearly proves the policies of the Sri Lankan government. That in this country, there should be a bipartisan policy where you re between the two major po parties in this country should at least join together rather than make this asylum issue a political issue and thereby increasing the ethnic tensions in this country. And they have deliberately brought out the primordial fears of a whole lot of people within the surrounding areas emerging on this beautiful country and making it enslaved. That is the impression, unfortunately, is going to be made an issue in the next elections. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the biggest problem. I will now come, there are a lot of uh, I, won't, I won't deal a lot with what has happened in Sri Lanka. I well documented the United Nations report, the book by Gordon Wise, and there's going to be a new book written by Miss Harrison, Counting the Dead. All those is, are incontrovertible evidence of what is happening there. The Channel 4 news items. Now I, I come back to the position of those who arrive here. When they arrive here, after this tremendous journey, very difficult journey, they are put behind bars. The detention is really a jail. I mean, how do you define a jail? A jail is a place where you are taken in and placed where you can't move. Here, a number of these people, as soon as they come, they are taken. And the worst aspect of is, they are tried and tested to be whether they are refugees. Who is a refugee? A refugee is a person who cannot return to his country because he fears for his life and he fears for his life and limb. That is one part of the government department. Department of Immigration, Migration does that. The other part is the so-called security risk. Fair enough. I have seen letters being received by Tamil refugees which says, asylum seekers, you are a refugee under the Geneva Convention. That means you can't return back to your country. That is a part of our law. The second law says, 
you are a security risk to australia how and not they are a security risk i cannot understand tell me if there's any person any sri lankan tamil who has caused to be a security risk to any western country nobody it's not like some other terrorist groups the sri lankan tamils have been fighting within their homeland for a separate state right even then i have the highest respect for intelligence in a country i have the highest respect for the aciu and the police but the policy of the government should be okay they say you are a security risk they must give the reasons a b and c you are a security risk in what country is a person taken and put behind bars without giving the reason they must do it in this country even though we have no human rights legislation we are determined by the british common law which says that every human being within this territory is subject to the habeas corpus act he cannot be taken into jail even a murderer a suspected murderer is a suspect he is taken to a magistrate within 48 hours and unless there is a prima facie case he is released here no reason is given he is put back i have no other case in in the eastern states where a lady was released out of detention she got married and after the marriage was not able to enjoy the basic human rights of a conjugal society with a spouse she has taken back and locked up so many there are 41 such cases of sri lankan and it is a, is a great insult to the australian citizens of justice if this continues thank you very much Thank you so much, Rama, for coming and speaking. Um, all right, so next we're going to have a speaker from the Refugee Rights Action Network, Marcus Roberts, um, who has been campaigning for freedom for refugees. Um, so he's going to talk, and then we're going to go on our march. So thank you. I'll just let everybody know we do send um, emails of videos and photos and things to people in detention of these protests to show them the support they get. Um, it means the world to them, and I know they're going to get a real kick out of the fact that you've all braved the rain to be standing here for their rights. Okay, they really, really appreciate what you're doing. So embrace the rain. We're out here to stand up for them. As has been said, 2012 marks the 20th uh, year of mandatory detention. Okay, for 20 years, successive Australian governments, with the assistance of the commercial media, have run a hate campaign and a fear campaign. to manufacture and manipulate racism for their own political gain. But for those 20 years, we've also had refugee rights advocates and activists fighting against this racism, fighting to uncover the truth, to correct the myths and to smash the racism. And that's why we come out here on the streets standing in the rain today to say that 20 years of mandatory detention is 22 years too long of this abuse and we call for an end to this barbaric policy now. We may not all be refugees, we may not all have lived through a refugee experience, but all of us can understand the importance of the things that people in refugee situations have lost. the importance of our family the importance of our homes the importance of having a safe place to which you belong and a secure future the importance of a freedom from fear we can understand what it is people have lost and because of that we can understand why it is that people in refugee situations do what all of us would do in that same situation and that is to flee the danger to flee the persecution to find a safe place where they can seek asylum for themselves and for their families. Unfortunately, people are not lucky enough to simply find this security once they get to the first country they flee to. In Pakistan, Malaysia, Indonesia, even Thailand, people do not find this safety straight away. These countries have not signed the UN Refugee Convention. They don't recognize the rights of refugees. People have no right to work. they have no right to send their kids to school they don't have the rights to secure a future and they live with the daily threat that they can be deported once again back to their country of origin where they again face that persecution in these countries that they fear first flee to they are not safe and in understanding that we can again understand why they do again what all of us would do what they have a legal right to do 
and that is to seek out a country which has signed the UN Refugee Convention, which recognises refugee rights, in which they can seek asylum and have a future. That country happens to be Australia, for one example. And people have a legal right to get, take whatever means necessary to get here and seek asylum. Unfortunately, when they arrive, they don't encounter a great beacon of uh, governments that respect human rights or respect the rule of the law. What they get is imprisonment in remote detention centres. What they get is imprisonment in conditions that we know cause people to attempt suicide that cause mental health problems. I've sadly been around to all of the detention centres across WA, Christmas Island and even to the Northern Territory and you can see when you visit people in detention the damage that is caused by these destructive machine that is mandatory detention. You see the, day, the scars of the daily suicide attempts and self-harm of people who could no longer survive the destruction of mandatory detention. You can see the hopelessness set in and people feel that there is no future, no place for them here. And you can see no better example of just how inhumane this system is than when you go to Leonora Detention Centre, a prison for children, where children, many of whom who have been orphaned by seeing their family members killed directly in front of them, are locked up in a prison and called not by their names, but by numbers. We have far more in common with refugees who struggle to fight for the safety of their families than we do with the governments that imprison them and the companies such as Serco who profit from their misery in running these detention centres. We can far better understand what motivates refugees to struggle to protect their families than we will ever understand what motivates politicians to exploit vulnerable people to protect their own political power. And because of that, we join with the rights of refugees in the fight for their rights, because to do so is to fight for our rights as well. So we come out here to fight for the rights of us all. We embrace the rain, because we will not let that tear us, tear us away. If governments want to imprison refugees away in remote detention centres, where they can hide them, where they cannot be seen, then we will be out in the streets and we will be seen. If they want to threaten refugees to silence them so they cannot be heard, when we will take to the streets and we will raise our voices and we will be heard. This campaign will grow. The fences will come down. We will win. And as we grow stronger, our collective voice will grow louder. And it will echo across the detention network, across this country. It will echo through the years so that anybody Whoever dares to protect their own political power by exploiting vulnerable people will hear us shout, free the refugees. We will not tolerate your abuse. We will not tolerate your oppression. We will keep on fighting and we will win because we do not accept the racism. We say no to the fear. We say loudly, refugees are welcome here. Free the refugees. Free the refugees. Free the refugees. Free the refugees! Free the refugees! Make sure you're shouting loud enough for everybody from Christmas Island all the way to Villawood can hear us because they need your support. Keep on shouting, free the refugees! Free the refugees! This world seems so much chaos, there's a shadow on the land. And I search the stars for answers, but I just don't understand Why broken souls in need of help cried out for us to hear Oh, we could have offered hope and love, instead we offered fear The fear of drab detention, locked like dingoes in a pound The fear of no horizon on this so-called Christian ground and the way we reap our weakest is what the world will see When we can give refuge to a refugee Why can't we give refuge to a refugee?